What's up guys? <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about that little patch that they did. Um, I'm actually surprised. It's like two patches in one month so far, which is pretty crazy for Mighty Quest. We haven't actually seen that in forever. Um, the, main, the main feature of this update is uh, adding a new type of skill for each hero called the Trap Control Skills. These skills provide heroes with the tools necessary to disrupt trap setups each in their own way. Um, I don't like this. I don't. I don't know why they would put this in. I feel like this is actually probably one of the worst things for the game since like camera rotation. And I know it's not going to go anywhere. I know it's going to be here for pretty much forever. Um, and we're kind of stuck with it right now. It's just. I don't know. For some reason, like the way, the way that people build castles, at least the fun way of building castles for a lot of people would be uh, you build a castle with like an idea in mind of what's going to happen to the attacker right you want to build this certain trap in a certain setup and it's ba the whole exciting part of this game is for the attacker side to figure out what the defender is trying to do to you and to try to like disrupt that which is great but having so many tools at your disposal to do literally everything um, I mean in my opinion, like you, you can remove the traps from from the question, and then you can just kite minions endlessly. Like attacking is already a little bit too easy as it is. Like there are some cool units they brought in: the Devlin and the uh, the Devlin, the uh, Goatman barricades. All of these sorts of things were good were good changes to the game. They were all quite good. Um, but something that allows you to disable parts of the defender's defense makes it a lot less fun for the defender watching the replays and stuff like that like I don't know I personally I don't like this um, this update uh, at least these specific things um, I'm not too big of a fan of it so let's talk about each one of them it looks like the runaways is pretty weak it only does a small line right in front of them um, I think that a um, that the uh, other other characters would be able to disable all of these things so especially like the archer in this circumstance would probably be the best um, because as a mage you'll have to go on top of the mines and a knight you'd have to find I guess the trap generator would work pretty well also uh, it looks like the trap generator is just over here powering all of those mines so that would work well for the knight as well um, so I think they probably got the worst end of it uh, the runaway did the knight in certain situations probably gets the best of it in most situations probably gets like the worst out of all of them um, it doesn't cost any mana the cooldowns the highest out of all of them I believe yes uh, it disables it for 10 seconds more uh, double than double the than everybody else um, but in certain situations, this will be really good for the knight. In other ones, it'll be completely use completely useless, such as people using trap generators through the wall. Uh, you can't do anything against that. So um, this is kind of a weird way to put put it in for the knights, the mages specifically. I think the mage got the best out of all of these. Um, they did receive a couple of nerfs this patch, but I think at least according to a lot of the people that I talked to about the game, um, the mage has been seeing some pretty pretty uh good balance like some like they're they're up there with archers uh definitely and i don't think that this really kills them in any way um i think they have the best way of removing barricades quickly uh with vortex it goes through barricades so you don't have to worry about like say volley um will sit at the edge of barricades rather than uh going over all of them um but yeah the way that this works is just like wherever the person is it kind of goes as a circle around them which in some ways it'll be bad if you have to actually go on to traps and take damage in order to use this ability that's kind of bad uh, the problem that I see is basically it has the lowest cooldown out of all of them and you can basically do it endlessly it's it uh, it disables it for five seconds and the cooldowns four seconds the cost of mana is pretty high, but we've all seen how how quickly mages regen mana. I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. If you do sit there and do it endlessly, I'm sure that you will run out of mana at some point. That's probably why the cost is so high. Um, but I think the cooldown is just a little bit too low for what it is, in my opinion. Um, I think archers 
at first I was going to say they got the mid mid range of it. Uh, there's some good things about the Archer one and some bad things. Um, from the little bit that I actually used it, uh, it's kind of like Volley, where you can put this little thing down anywhere. Um, it doesn't work as well as it looks like it works in the video, though. Sometimes if you put it like at the edge of um, mouse wheels and like say there's some other mouse wheel or some other like uh, springboard trap or something like that it won't actually disable the mouse wheels it'll it you have to kind of put them on the center of the mouse wheels for that to work um, which is kind of annoying uh, I don't know I don't think it's good enough where it's uh, worth taking away an ability slot for the archer um, and that might be the same for every character I don't know uh, it might be that you just can't find a slot for it I haven't played the, the uh, other classes enough to really know that, but for the Archer, I don't really think this ability is going to be worth it. I was trying to get rid of uh, Spiral Shot for this, and you just need Spiral Shot for those mid-ranged uh, you know, fights between like Goatmen and, and Devlins. They're too strong if you don't have something to stun them and to get away and stuff like that. Um, so they replaced some of the older skills. I'm not even going to really mention this because I don't think I've ever seen any of these abilities being used. Um, Hawk Sentry is probably the only one that I've seen out of all of these, like, ever, uh, in my year of playing Mighty Quest, so I don't think that's too big of a deal. Um, the Runaway is now available for purchase in Blings, I guess that's a good thing. I wish they would release the Flamia for Blings, or just as normal, most likely as normal, because that would be kind of silly, um, if they just released a creature for Blings, but... I guess it would be better than it is right now. Um, so balancing heroes, we have the Runaway. Basically, the Runaway gets uh, more shields for pretty much these three abilities. I don't. I've never played the Runaway, uh, so I don't re actually know how big of a buff this is. Um, it doesn't seem like the numbers are too big of a too big of buffs, but it definitely will help her because the Knight got flat stat increases because of uh, because of creatures dealing double damage, and so I guess this is supposed to try to help. Like She, she got a flat uh, health buff by 40%, which is pretty high, but without items it's not going to be that big of a deal. It might be a few hundred health. Um, not too big. Uh, these are probably the biggest changes to the, to the mage. I thought before this patch that they are probably stronger than the archer, and I was going to think, I was thinking about leveling one up. Um, I'm not sure if it is a too big of a deal. I don't know. The mana cost has been increased on Vortex Rift. I don't. 30 mana is nothing for the mage. I don't know what their max mana is, but it regens so quickly that by the time you use this, it's pretty much up. Like by the time by the time the animation is over, you already have that 30 mana back. And then the dam damage reduction by 20%. I don't know how big of a deal this is going to be. Um, it seems like it's high, but Vortex never did a ton of damage. It was really for setting up other things to. Uh, to deal damage. Like you use Vortex and you used another AoE ability on top of that to deal most of the damage. Um, Death Bolt, this is actually pretty big. The damage reduction being 30% is pretty high on Death Bolt, considering uh, I know Death Bolt has a, has a big damage multiplier already. It does something like 1000 damage, 1000 to 1500, somewhere in that range. Um, so 30% is pretty high on that. Uh, I'm not really sure why, I guess because it has a shield associated to it as well. Um, that they nerfed that slightly. These are two of the abilities that you see every mage using. Conflagration, I'm not sure if a lot of people use this, um, but it uh, it upgrades again, basically. The skill duration is 8 seconds. I don't know what it was before. I don't know what the, uh, the second upgrade of this was, so I don't know how big of a buff that is. And then the knight gets a bigger shielding strike, which actually this is pretty huge, from 12% to 25%. I believe that's 25% of your hit points you will shield on top of this for, I don't know what the duration is, but that's really high. 25%, you have to think, if a mage, if a knight has like 4,000 hit points, which ev everyone does, um, every knight does, that's an extra 1,000 hit points that they can tank. Like, that's pretty high. So it's probably going to be upwards of like 1,250 to 1,500 every time they use shielding strike. That's pretty strong. Um, crafting materials, they slightly increased the drop rates of crafting materials and lowered the rates of dyes. I haven't noticed a big um, change to this, but I've only been re really playing a day and I haven't farmed all that much. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's really worth it. Um, I mean, it's obviously worth it. It's obviously a good a good buff for uh, for material drop rates, but 
Um, and then they added a new pack. I'm not going to really talk about that. Just a bigger pack so people don't have to just constantly be opening them. Um, they lowered the prices of a lot of these themes and such. Uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, I might even pick up like a spooky theme now for $3.99 and stuff like that. Um, these are fine. They're probably getting ready to release a bunch more. That's probably why they're doing this. They're probably going to wait like a week for people to pick up these reduced priced uh, themes, and then they'll come out with a bunch of new ones that people will want to use, most likely. Um, they changed the effectiveness of boosts. Uh, so they basically doubled them. So for Magic Find, this is a pretty huge change, I'm guessing. Um, but they lowered it. I think you used to get three. Uh, for or one for a hundred or something like that. Maybe you used to get one for a hundred. Now it's one for two hundred. I don't remember. I don't know the prices of them before. I uh, I don't. Know, I don't use them all that often. Obviously, the golden life force are probably never going to get used. Nobody needs to do that. Like you just farm people for that. Um, and it's never really worth it. Like it'll double the effectiveness of your mines for an hour. That's not really that big of a deal. Um, it's mostly when you're farming, but it's only from creature drop rates. I'm pretty sure. So it's not going to get you all that much. Um, XP boosts are also uh, also something that people use when they don't want to they don't want to uh, level up and take forever doing so. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it. There's uh, some bug fixes. I don't think any of these are too important. Um, they did fix a few crashes. I guess that's a couple good things. I don't know if this, uh, the crash occurring in defense mode, I don't know if that's the tombstone crash. I know that's the big one that a lot of people have been complaining about. I haven't crashed yet today, I don't think. Um, so, that could be good. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And then there's some known issues as well. If you guys want to read through those, that's fine. I'm not going to go over all of that, though. Um, so overall, I don't know. I don't like this change. Some people might like it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the trap control skills. If it is, if they are all kind of terrible, like the archers, like I probably will never use this as the archer. Uh, I feel like if I had a mage, I would try try this out. It seems to me like the best one out of all of them. Um, and then the knights would only be good in certain situations, so you're probably never really going to use that. Even though it would be really good for certain uh, certain like uh, castle builds, if you see something prominent that pops up a lot that like uh, knights would be really good against, maybe someone would start taking that. But I don't think it's going to be useful. And then I don't see anyone t using this. Like that seems so bad uh, that I wouldn't use that. I don't know. They're going to be here to stay, so uh, I'm not going to complain about it too much. I mean, I'll, I might try using it a little bit, or I might level up a mage or something like that. Um, but it's going to be a situation where we're going to have to start building castles around the fact that this is in the game. And for people who don't use it, it's just going to make the castles easier. Uh, and for people who do, you just kind of have to try to build around that. It To me, this feels like it's going to encourage all in the boss room strategies. Because creatures in smaller areas need a lot, need a few like traps to help help them deal damage. Like if you have a segmented castle, the entire... Uh, idea behind it is that you have four or five groups and all of them have a good amount of traps around them that will deal damage. But if you can shut down those traps as you're going through it, it makes it infinitely easier because the creatures that we use in segmented castles are, you like force someone into a zone where they have to fight or they have to take extra trap damage. If they don't have to take that trap damage and they can kite it back, it's extremely easy to go through those groups. Like, there's there's no reason... Like, if you don't put traps in your castle and you use a segmented type castle, it will never work. Because it's too easy to kite things like um, Stairmasters, Devlins, uh, Goatmen. Those are the things that you would use in a sustained damage castle because they have high probabilities of actually dealing their damage in mid-range combat. And that's the whole point of, uh, of doing that, is you lock them into this small area and then hope that the creatures can deal a little bit of damage as well as the traps and force out potions. But that's my thoughts, so you can share your thoughts in the comments below, and that is pretty much it for this patch. So thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.